Okay, people, uh, let's go into some deep analysis of a kite. All right, so what is a kite? Uh, well, a kite's a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of adjacent sides. Okay, let's put some tick marks in to kind of represent that visually of what that means. Well, adjacent sides look like that. Those are sides that are next to each other, and they're going to be congruent. Uh, that's what equal means. So uh, we need another distinct pair of adjacent sides. So there we go. Uh, most people have a general idea what a kite looks like from their childhood. So uh, let's just be super clear. These two sides are going to be congruent. And ooh, what type of triangle do you see? And then these two triangles are going to be congruent. And ooh, what type of triangle do you see? Well, that's a little preview of the analysis that we're going to use here uh, to talk about these items in here. All right, so uh, it turns out there's some beautiful symmetry along this mirror image. Uh, along the left hand, left and right hand sides of this kite um, and all their corresponding sides. There's some uh, amazing triangles in here and we're going to be classifying their triangles into all different types. We're going to hopefully see some right triangles. Hopefully you can detect some isosceles triangles, some scalene triangles, and then use some additional analysis to discover um, which triangles are congruent. All right, so once again, uh, let's uh, put some tick marks in about these uh, about this kite and for a number of reasons uh, we can prove that a lot of these triangles are congruent and then once they're congruent we have corresponding sides of corresponding uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent so I'm going to start to highlight some of the uh, parts that would be congruent. Well, it turns out that that angle would be equal to that angle once we get some triangles to be congruent. And these two angles would be congruent as well. And then we have these two angles to be congruent. And then we have our other set of angles here on the bottom. They're congruent as well. There's <clears throat> some more angles as well in this picture, and what angles am I going to talk about? That is the angles created by the two diagonals. Well, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it turns out that these diagonals are perpendicular. Therefore, they create right angles. Therefore, they are 90 degrees. Um, there's a few more things uh, in this uh, ax, an imaginary axis of symmetry here, left and right, that produces some congruent parts. And we're going to be talking about these two segments in here are always going to be congruent. But then there's two more other segments in here, but the last two uh, segments are running right down the middle, and they are definitely not equal to one another. So I'm going to put four tick marks on top and five tick marks on the bottom to kind of clearly represent that those two segments there are not congruent. So hopefully you can see overall that we do have a symmetrical axis in here producing uh, congruent uh, parts on both the left and right hand sides uh, of this kite. And that's going to produce some amazing triangles that we're going to be talking about here in a second. So uh, let's erase this, kind of start over again. I'm going to go to a different page and show you. Well, this is another uh, kite here. What's fun about this one, I can just grab on this dot and show you there's so many kites in the world that we can kind of create. Skinny ones, big ones, wide ones, very, very wide ones. So most people think of these uh, kites being, again, from uh, our childhood. So hopefully, as I move around, and this is fun, fun to do, if I move around uh, uh, this kite here, hopefully you can see that the two distinct adjacent sides, uh, uh, BC and DC, they're congruent, and AB and AD, that is congruent. Also take note that angle B and angle D, no matter where I move this, those two angles are always going to be congruent. That's not the same with angles A and C. A and C, uh, that is not the case. But B and D here, those two angles are always going to be congruent. And one last thing, if I click on this box, that's going to show me the diagonals. And clearly, now you can see that the diagonals, no matter what shape I created here, what type of kite, big or small, uh, the diagonals are 
always perpendicular. Okay, so let's go back to our picture in here. And let's talk about some of the triangles that we see. Well, I want you to focus on, uh, well, let's count the triangles. Well, how many triangles do we have? Uh, well, hopefully you're getting the same number I have. I count eight. Um, most people would just count four, maybe six. It's hard to see all eight, but we're going to eventually get to all eight. But for now, I want you to focus on uh, this blue one here and that one right there. So there's two blue triangles in here. Let's call this triangle one and triangle two. And then there's two triangles here at the bottom, this green one here and that green one right there. That's uh, triangles three and four. So uh, what do all four of those triangles have in common? Well, hopefully you remember what we just talked about, the diagonals. It turns out those diagonals are perpendicular. Therefore, we have four triangles uh, that are right. And that's all the triangles we have focused on so far. All four of those triangles are right. Well, not only are they right, well, take a look at which ones are congruent. Well, the two on the top are going to be congruent. And let me put some tick marks in Y. Well, look at this reflexive side in here. So hopefully you see now that is hypotenuse leg and that one's hypotenuse leg. Those two triangles are definitely congruent. And now if they're congruent, hopefully you can see all the corresponding parts to those two congruent triangles are congruent as well. And what about the ones on the bottom? Those two green ones I mentioned, well, uh, if I use a re little reflexive side in here, then those two green triangles, not only are they right, they're congruent as well for the same reason, hypotenuse leg. And once again, take a look. That means this angle is congruent to that angle. This angle is congruent to that angle. Um, so that's really amazing that we have these two triangles on top. They're congruent. These two triangles on the bottom, they are congruent as well. So that's talking about four of the eight triangles. Now we have four more triangles to talk about. And where are they? Well, I want you to focus on this top triangle, and I want you to focus on this bottom triangle as a whole. So there's two more triangles here. The yellow one, that's the fifth one, and the blue one's the sixth one. And again, let me put my original tick marks in. And now, hopefully you can notice what I'm noticing is the yellow triangle is what? It is isosceles. And the blue triangle is isosceles as well. And that makes sense. We'll take a look at the base angles. The base angles of the yellow triangles are congruent. And be careful. That doesn't mean that the base angles of the blue triangle are the same as the yellow ones. But it certainly tells us that the blue base angles are congruent. And then the yellow base angles are congruent. Uh, and we have two isosceles triangles. So that's triangles five and six. And so there's two final triangles we need to look at. And where do we want to find them? Well, we're going to find one on the left-hand side. And we're going to find one on the right-hand side. That's triangles seven and eight. And take a look at these original tick marks in again and try to see this side that they're sharing as some sort of reflexive side. And what conclusion can we make about the t entire triangle on the left-hand side versus the entire triangle on the right-hand side? Well, those two triangles are congruent. Not only are they congruent, they're going to be scalene in this case. So just by drawing in the two diagonals of a kite, we are going to produce eight triangles all together. We have four right triangles. We have a couple of triangles that are isosceles. We have a couple of triangles that are scalene. And we have several sets of congruent triangles as well. Um, so hopefully you learned a lot in this deep analysis of when we draw in diagonals, we get this beautiful mirror image and hopefully that's going to help us set up some problems over the next few less, uh, next few videos here of how to solve uh, for uh, all the corresponding parts of uh, a kite in here. Okay, thanks a lot.